today I'm very excited to welcome Melissa. Hi. We're gonna cook from her kitchen. Um, so Melissa is runner for her bakes, a beautiful food content, mm -hmm. and also um, she's really dedicated. What I like most about um, her is that uh, she'll do a lot of research when it comes to coming out with recipes, how to cook, and then she'll always share those tips generously on her social media channel and also uh, on your right with our community. So today we're going to learn really exciting two amazing dishes using beef. Um, so yeah, maybe Melissa? Sure. So yeah, just to introduce the dishes, um, I'll be doing a very nice cottage pie as well as a beef steak quesadilla. So uh, what I really like about both recipes is that there are some components that you can actually use. We'll divide our attention between both <laughs> cameras equally because there are two cameras, uh, two streaming platforms that we're using now. So uh, what I really like about the cottage pie recipe is that there are certain elements inside the recipe, right, that you can use for other dishes. So I'm very, very excited to share that with you. Like you can use it for a pasta, you can use it to spread on bread and stuff like that. So I really love that recipe and I almost didn't want to share it, but I thought, never mind, la. Ah. just be kind since everyone is stuck at home. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Um, so just wondering, um, is anyone from uh, Australia here? Wow. We have someone watching from Gardens by the Bay, Suwanti. Hello. Wow. That's very nice. Um, please, Australia. yeah, don't be shy. Switch on your camera. And yeah, it's very related to today's class theme. So if you're from Australia or you live in Australia before, leave us a note, say hi. Because you will feel very close to home. <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, how many people? Just want to check. On my end, let me walk you through uh, some of the ingredients that you have to prep. Wait, so, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yeah. Just want to check, check that everyone on Zoom is okay. If you have you have prepared your ingredients to cook, yeah. Uh, you have everything set up. Before we start, yes, um, the uh, two go through the recipes and the ingredients. Wow, Hello. so many, yay. Hi. This is my happiest moment mm -hmm. when I see so many faces. Uh, please, yeah, switch on your camera. Don't be shy. I know we have people cooking with us. Hi, Florence. Thank you for switching on your camera. Oops. What is Florence most excited to learn about today? Can she share with us? Oh, hi, Raymond. Hi, Cici. <laughs> oh, wow. Hello. Looking hi, great. Hi, Grace. Let us know what you're most excited to learn about today. Yeah, so we have more people joining in. The sound on the IG. Oh, let us just fix the sound here. Hello, can you guys hear me? Can you let me know if you can hear me? Yes. Or is it an audio issue again? Yeah, for the Zoom, it's, it's fine. Okay, great. Um, okay. All good. Yay. All good. Okay, so now we figure out all the tech. I uh, hope you are, you are ready. So today's uh, class is, the theme is Steak Masterclass. Mm. It's in collaboration with True Aussie and the Meat Club. Meat Club is um, sources uh, high quality protein from Australia, uh, directly from the farmers and uh, use world-class facilities um, and directly deliver to your doorstep. So yeah. there's no waste and you can indulge in high quality protein that's fresh, premium, hala uh, for wholesome and diverse diet. We have three stars today. Yes, these are the stars. <laughs> we have the stir fry strips, as you can see here, 300 gram. Ta -da! Really good because you can use it for Asian stir fry. You can use it uh, for easy grill. And then of course the eye fillet, which M Melissa just uh, showed. It's my favorite cut. That's why we're using it today. <laughs> you can use it for, of course today we are going to use it for the quesadilla, but you can use it for skewer and of course many different ways. Hmm. And you also have the minced beef. It's the lean uh, mince, which is super versatile. You can use it from burger, right? Classic, definitely kids' favorite. Also to aspect bolognese. Also, of course, for today's showstopper recipe, cottage pie. Yeah. So, yeah, we're very excited to work with these ingredients. And I think we also have a super interesting promo to share with you, which is the fact that... Um, the Meat Club actually offers this subscription program, right? Yes. Yeah. It's so called, it has a really cool name and uh, also a uh, package. It's yeah. free means for life. Yeah. For life. For yes, life, it's uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the catch? Actually, there's not much of a catch. All you need to do is 
uh, cut out hundred dollars worth of uh, products in your cart, and then the once you opt in for the subscription program, yes, there will be three hundred grams of grass fed uh, mince, lean mince that will be sent over to your house. And on top of that, um, the Meat Club actually has a welcome promo for all of you guys. Uh, yes. Just cut out with the code WELCOME10 to get 10% off. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to show you how to turn this high quality meat <laughs> into delicious food on our awesome, table. Awesome. And we're going to probably put it in this chiller bag to keep them fresh in the meantime. Yeah. So if you attempt the quesadilla recipe, right, you can, you can actually... Uh, Cut out via meat club and then get your free mince also. So you can use the mince for your cottage pie. So it's almost like a two for one, which is yes. quite nice. Okay. Okay. So, so let's get started. That's the most exciting part. Okay. So we'll uh, start off with the cottage pie first because that is the more challenging and time consuming recipe. And then after that, we'll move on to the quesadilla. Uh, if you've tuned into my live streams before, or if this is your first time tuning into a live stream, right? Just to let you all know, some of the ingredients have been prepared in advance already. Yes. Yeah. This is so that we can uh, uh, condense all the key learning points into the stream and so that we don't waste your time as well. But you can feel free to DM any of us at the end of the stream if you are uh, unsure about a certain procedure. But the hardest procedure and the star ingredients, such as the beef today, will definitely be highlighted. Awesome. Okay. So let's get started. First, let me turn on my cast iron pan. Yes. So I'm using one with a, if you all can see here, so I'm using one with a very large surface area because we want to ensure even browning on the mince meat. And so is gonna, it to medium, medium high? Uh, actually, we start off at medium high. Okay, medium high Yeah. For to heat up the pan. Yeah. Prepare uh, some oil. Correct. And when you're working with beef, uh, just to let you know, beef goes very well. I'm sure a lot of you who have cooked before, beef goes very well with rosemary. The recipe doesn't call for rosemary, but I plucked some fresh rosemary sprigs from the garden. So these are like some bonus tips for you guys. Uh, going yes. back to the full screen. So of course it's optional, but if bonus you have herbs for you guys, yes. since you join in the live class, <sighs> I got more bonus tips coming up. So stay tuned. Oh yeah, we'll also be giving away uh, the Meat Club's merchandise. Um, so do stay tuned to know, find out how to win those merchandise. Awesome. Okay, so let me get my We're going to first, yes, first step is to stir fry um, the lean uh, grass-fed uh, minced beef. Hmm. So a pack is about 300 gram. Okay. And, How um, many percent fat would you know ooh, is in this lint? Uh, I think it's a very good question. Let's see. It's not on the packaging. But if you look at the amount of white, which is the fat, right? I think I'm guessing it's definitely less than 20%, which means that you're getting a lot of beef. Very high this. protein. Yeah. And very good for the kids as well. Also, both di dishes, by the way, if you're cooking for your kids, have uh, hidden vegetables inside. <laughs> so like, uh, yeah, it's very good for... A balanced, healthy diet. Yes. Okay, I'm going to test a bit. You see there's a sizzle already on the pan, so I can... Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, it is because it we is. are using it. As you can see, this is real. Our life is real. Mm. So the question is... Oh, can you hear the sizzle sound? Okay, I, I think I need to show. Yeah. So I'm going to go in with 300 gems at one shot, okay? Yep. So that it's even browning. Yes. And then I'm going to put more oil as well. I'm sorry for the smoke. No problem. But this is real life cooking, so it can be a bit unblend. Try add some oil. Yes, please. So be liberal about the oil. My recipe calls for eight tablespoons of oil, but you can feel free to add more. Yeah, because it's lean. Correct. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. So uh, we need more oil. Okay. So this is a clo uh, close-up. Um, of uh, now what's happening in the cast iron pan. So the question was, is the cast iron pan compatible with... Um, yes, it is. Uh, but I think Induction, it depends, yeah. It depends on your induction of uh, brand as well. The brand I'm using is Brand, B-R-A-N-D-T. But I think nowadays the modern um, induction surfaces can already accommodate cast iron. Wow, it smells so good. And by the way, I haven't even added any seasoning yet. Nah. Mm. 
Okay, so this yeah. one is Mabel say hers is Bosch. Oh, can yours also do on induction? Mabel, can can yours? Yeah, can the cast iron pen your um your Bosch sorry, induction also good for actually, uh, actually, uh, cast I iron? I, I don't actually, know yes, uh, because either. it's metal, right? Okay, mm. so uh, since I need even browning, and if you are on the your right app as well, uh, the recipe note state that you once you achieve brownness, take it out and transfer. So what I'm going to do is transfer it to a bowl and then work on my next batch of mince leaf. Mm. So actually, you don't require any seasoning. All you yet. do is just yet. Sorry. Yeah. So also, right, you see uh, on the close-ups on the, on the Zoom as well, you see this brown thing, don't fret, because it's going to add additional flavor to your final product. Mm -hmm. And uh, chefs actually use this, when they make steak, right, they actually use this, they deglaze it, and then they make a gravy out of it as well. Ta -da. So that's so, quite awesome. Okay, I need two more packs I'm of the mince, please. To the, I, yes. Right here. Okay, the mince, let's get it. more packed. Okay. So, so you can, uh, for the full recipe, right, or real right, you type cottage pie, you're going to find the recipe. And the uh, a full recipe is for six, but you can adjust the Correct. serving. Then you can scale down the recipes, uh, all the ingredients, and of course, make it according to how many people you're serving. But my recommendation is do the whole recipe because then you can Correct. keep, right, you can... Uh, you can keep. You, can yeah. you freeze them or? Yeah, it stores well on the freezer. Mm. Uh, you can also, uh, yeah, definitely keep it. Then make it in advance. Copy it in the oven to reheat. Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna do three badges because today we're gonna do one kg, right? Yes, uh, one yes. kg. So Ooh, it's about kg. three and a half packs basically. Yes. Plus one pack is three hundred yen. That's right. About three and a half pack. We can mm. be generous. Okay, so Sinyan, do you mind helping me uh, empty the dried mushrooms into yes. the uh, metal bowl at the back? Definitely. Because the next step that we are yeah, calling yeah. for is to... So whilst the beef is uh, actually frying up, right, uh, we want to rehydrate our dried mushrooms. So I mentioned that there are two secret ingredients that make this dish an umami bomb, and that would have to be the two secret ingredients are mushroom and seaweed as well. Oh, yeah. uh oh! If we don't have seaweed, can we use anything to replace? I have seaweed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, I told a, a friend who's huh. joining saying seaweed is okay. Oh, <laughs> as in you don't have seaweed. You don't have seaweed, is it? Yes. Oh. Try to use uh, dashi. Dashi. Mm. Yeah, of course, dashi gives uh, umami Maybe as well. A bit well. of soy sauce. Soy sauce as well. That's soy, soy in the recipe already. Okay. So oh, you can oh. feel free to substitute accordingly if you don't mm -hmm. have yeah. Do you want me to add more oil? Yes, I will do that also. Sorry, can, can I ask you if you and are making... Because dry mushroom in the... The dry, uh, mushroom. Uh, the dry mushrooms are these ones. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. So, just pour all uh, these. So what we are going to do, uh, actually the recipe calls for porcini mushrooms, but a cheaper, more cost-effective method is to just get the Chinese ones. Yeah. Because porcini is very expensive in Singapore, by the way. Yeah. Actually, and the, the, this mushroom is also very good. Yeah. Very fragrant. Yeah. And I don't want you all to do recipes that are too expensive, but it's not practical to do at home. So what do we do with this dry mushroom? Okay. Uh, what we do is pour it here okay. into the stainless steel okay. uh, bowl. Okay. And then we'll, we'll actually pour hot water on it. Okay. Oh, yes. About to uh, rehydrate for about 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Okay, so how much we need? Oh, 100 okay. grams. Oh, we're being very generous here. So, 100 grams of dry mushroom. We're gonna but, pour yeah, one note, right, is that this dry mushroom, you might have to do it a bit longer than 10 minutes as per what the recipe says because there's this herbal taste as well for the Chinese ones, but otherwise, the stock should be able to cover that herbal taste also. So no worries. Okay, so okay. so this is my second match. Ta -da! It's 4.15 now. We're going to make it soak for 10 minutes on the side. Can you see? Do we have questions? Yes. Sorry? 
Why do you keep the meat again? So first, no, we're not cooking it again. This is a separate bag. Oh, okay. Of, yeah, um, minced meat. I think what she means is that when are we going to like put it in again? So later on, uh, when the stock is cooking and towards the end of the cooking process, we're actually going to put it in the oven to bake along with the mashed potatoes. So that's at the last step and we're going to go in at about 170 degrees for 20 minutes, depending on your oven as well. Okay, so uh, one So more. this is the third pack. So CC, we're not cooking the same meat, okay? Every time we're putting a fresh pack into the pan. Yeah, because it costs for one kilo, so it's a lot. Okay, maybe wait a few seconds for the, to be, the oil to be hot. This is why you need a large surface area for your pan. Because if you use a normal uh, pan, it's going to take super long. Okay, let me... I need about half a pack more, I think. Okay, yeah, I will mm -hmm. open that. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So the last batch, we are doing it um, one and a half pack because we need one kg. Now, the packaging is very easy. You can just mm. right seal it and then put it in the fridge. Very clean also. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to put it in the fridge now. Okay. So let me just walk you through the next few steps that you can anticipate. Um, after I'm done browning the beef, um, what I will do is cook the onions and the carrots in and then add my tomato puree and my stock. Okay. Hello. If you have questions around how to handle minced beef, feel free to ask. I think minced beef is super easy and very forgiving also. Mm. Very good starter for you. Yes, so suggest if you are worried about how to handle beef confidently, definitely a good cut to start with it. But of mm. course, today we're going to show you how to handle beef confidently. Also, the other parts like the eye fillet, which mm. is absolutely delicious. Okay, we're almost there. Hang in there, guys. Yes. I'm going to show you again. So this is the last bag of um, the fried meat. It's oh, uh, yeah. Honey Grace is asking, is there mm. any seasoning added to the minced beef? No. So usually for normal recipes involving minced beef, like burgers and whatnot, you pre-season your mince, right? But in this case, my stock is very heavily seasoned. And uh, I'm going to go in with a very nice mashed potato at the end as well. So no need to season the beef. We want the uh, minced beef to later on absorb all the rich stock. So yeah, in this case, no need for seasoning yet. But if you want, like I said earlier, I have actually a rosemary sprig that I can add in just for the additional aroma. In fact, I'll add in uh, two sprigs or three sprigs. Okay. So I will add it all in later on so it will infuse. Mm, yes, it does. It does, right? Yes. So like when you do like um cheaper cuts of meat as well, that's a hack that you can use. Just add rosemary yes. and it will smell more expensive immediately. Yes. So we have a question from Valeska on mm. how long can we keep this um, uh, the grass-fed uh, beef, the mince in the fridge. So we actually have dates on the packaging. Yep. Uh, if you can, if we can see. Yep. So it's best chilled and so best frozen. So when you order on the Meat Club's website, right, you can choose the meat, whether to be delivered chilled or frozen. Exactly. Yeah, today we asked to be chilled because we were going to cook. We got it them yesterday and yeah. we cooked them today. But if you want to keep them for a longer period, definitely get the, the frozen one and they yeah. have the expiration date. So for chilled, it's about a month because it even has packed date uh, on the packaging. And for frozen, is a year. Wow. Yeah, and I believe that they are, all their meats don't contain any sort of preservatives as well. But yes. Yeah, so that's good. Okay, finally, we are done with the part cooking of the minced beef. And now we will start on with our stock. Mm. I'm very, very excited to share with you about the stock, by the way, because there's like a few secret hacks that I have for you. Yes, so like I share, right? Um, uh, yes, Melissa is very good with research and then getting the best of from various sources, <laughs> putting into yeah, one recipe that's correct. adapted to also our lifestyle here Correct. and what's available at home. Yeah. So it's really good. 
Fantastic. Okay, so we are done with the beef. Now we will move on to the stock. So first step of the Going stock is to brown our vegetables. So yes. I've already grated uh, my carrots and my onions. So I'll put them simply into the stock. Again, oil. Yes. Okay. So Still medium, about medium, medium, yeah, low. If you're using a cast iron, don't need to... To, to warm. By the way, you can mimic my workflow, okay? If you're like, so that you don't have so much hassle when you're preparing at home or for dinner, you just pre-grade everything already so that when it's time to cook, you just need to cook. Don't need to waste your time washing the yeah. dishes and stuff. And if there are two of you, right, you can actually, you have a, like two workspace, two stoves, right? So maybe actually one of you can stir fry the meat and the other actually can already either be cutting the vegetables exactly when, when the meat is being cooked um, so that it's ready uh, to make the stock. So that is an on onion and uh, wow, very finely minced carrot. Yeah. I'm going to show you a close up. So, you know what's my secret? <laughs> the finely minced carrot. Yes. It's I'm... not my elbow grease, it's the thermal mix. I just put it inside the thermal mix and then blend it. So, if you guys want to uh, invest in a thermal mix, right, it's really a lifesaver. But you can always grate it as well with a traditional grater. Yes. Okay, mm. so we are going to layer. So this whole process is about layer flavor, uh, layering flavors. So we start off with the purest, uh, which is the veggies. After the veggies are brown, there's also a caramelization effect taking place in the cast iron. And then after that, we will add on our stocks. Mm, yes, because there's sweetness mm -hmm. in onions. So that's how it comes from. And then there was some leftover fat, right? And brown bites from the beef. So everything, all the aromas and the flavors are being assembled, coming together under heat. Very important. So as you can see again, the, the browning at the bottom right, is actually adding more flavor. And in my recipe, okay, it states this. Um, basically, we pour our onions and carrots into the same pan that you use to brown your beef and fry until the res residue in the pan from the beef is gone. So it's incorporated into the vegetables, basically. Yes. Wow, yeah. we have 50 people over Zoom joined wow, nice. me today. Thank hey. you. I wish you could smell what I'm smelling now. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next, right, we're going to have to add our tomato puree and our garlic. So mm -hmm. the garlic actually, uh, I give you a sneak preview of the recipe that we're doing. Oh, yes. This is... So, I, we, we tested before the, the class a little bit just now. Very yeah. interesting. So this is an amazing condiment. It's called uh, Moho de Ayo. So it's actually a Mexican condiment that has chili, tomatoes, orange juice, and garlic. And it's infused overnight. So I will walk you through the recipe later on. But I'm going to add like a, about a tablespoon in just for additional flavor. Mm. Okay. So in this recipe, you're actually getting a lot of small recipes to do. Yeah. <laughs> realize now that yeah. you can use it to actually just like marinate meat, uh, also uh, in other dishes as add the flavor. Okay, so this looks sufficiently sauteed, really it's translucent. So I'm gonna go in with my tomato concentrate as oh, well. Oh wow. The my garlic again brings out even more flavor under the heat. So the paste again is a garlic. Um, tomato puree. Garlic oil, yeah. Yeah, garlic oil, tomato. Uh, I use, you can use alum tomatoes. You can also use uh, cherry tomatoes as well. Yeah, if you don't have the garlic oil, right, you can just add garlic. Yeah. That means garlic first. Yeah. yeah. So and on that note, right, why don't I share with you guys what my favorite garlic to cook with is? It's not just any garlic, uh, it's this garlic. It's called the fragrant garlic. See? You know why? Because garlic is so troublesome to cook with. But this one, because garlic usually the typical one has cloves, right? All I need to do is just cut off the bottom and it's a whole piece already. See? So I don't need to chop off the cloves one by one. It saves my time by a lot. It's available at NTUC, Shengshong, all that. Just look for this, uh, this vegetable called fragrant garlic. Yeah. Okay, I put in my tomato puree already. Let me see what's next, okay? I will lower down the heat a little bit. Okay, and then cook for a minute to a minute and a half. Okay. 
Wow, the mushrooms has it. It's just 10 minutes. Yay. So we're putting at 4.15, now it's 4.25. So we are ready. So, uh, what, yeah. Uh, first, we will add in our mushroom, the, basically this mushrooms first. These are the fresh butter mushrooms over here. Yes. Also oh, sliced? Uh, yes, sliced already. Okay. Wow. So let's put it in. Yay. Okay, this one piece I didn't cut because it's uh, under the weight. So let's okay. leave it aside. Okay, so I will add more oil at this point. Yes, mushrooms really need oil. Okay. And then you just continue going for it. Yes. You can see all the hidden vegetables ready. Uh, yeah, so that's how you uh, make your kids eat veggies. Ha ha ha. So it looks like a lot of mushroom, right? But mushroom contains about 80% of water. So it's slowly going to lose the, its volume. Yes. Yeah. And do, do be generous with the oil as well here because mushrooms really require yeah, okay. oil yes, to be well cooked. So in this case, I'm using Evo, uh, extra virgin olive oil. It's a bit healthier, of course, since there's so much oil being used. You don't want to use your canola or soybean, soybean oil kind of thing to make this. Mm. Okay, so the puree is in. It's losing its volume already, as you can see. Yes, it's shrinking as we speak. Do I have to uh, remove the water? Uh, not, the yet. Rinse? not yet. Not yet. Uh, let's, get, let's put in the... Because for the recipe, right, we don't put in that until later on. Let me just double Okay, so we can let it soak for a bit longer. Yeah. The Chinese dry mushroom in water. Right. After adding the, the sliced fresh butter mushroom, uh, stir fry it for a few minutes, yeah, so that uh, the water is being evaporated. Next. Ooh, wine. red wine. Yeah, so um, this recipe calls for 200 ml of red wine, so I bought the mini versions. Uh, but one thing to know, if you're halal, right, you can look for alcohol-free red wine or you can substitute, substitute it for the same amount of stock, basically. Mm. So if you don't want to use red wine, yes, you can use beef stock and, and stock to enhance the flavor. But here we're going to use red wine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can open the other one also because yes. uh, it needs... 250. Ooh. Okay. So this is a process called deglazing uh, in cooking. Yes. So you see chefs, right? Restaurants, they will have big bottles and then they will pour generously. And you can smell the alcohol smell coming out, right? Yes. Uh, so the point is to actually cook out the alcohols. That's right. Mm. So it's yes, because the alcohol so evaporates at lower temperature, right? So immediately as you pour the wine in, actually the alcohol is being evaporated. Right. What's left is, um, of course, the acidity, the tannins of the wine mm -hmm. uh, that actually will really enhance the flavors of the vegetable. Mm -hmm. okay. So one, yeah, one thing you can then look at is it definitely changes the color of the stew mm -hmm. after adding the red wine. And we're going to let this sit for about maybe two minutes. Oh, no, actually more than two minutes because we want the volume to reduce by about half. So in the meantime, what I'll be doing is actually uh, uh, blitzing up the, these, uh, the dried mushroom chunks. Okay. So I blitz it up until it's very, very small. Then I incorporate it back inside. Okay. So blitz. let's do that. Yes. And okay. as it's been uh, still do, simmered, yeah. yeah, simmered for about 10 minutes. So 4.30 now. So we have this, okay, which is the rehydrated dried mushrooms. And uh, what we want to do is we don't want to sieve out the water, okay? The, because the water has a, a lot of uh, mushroom, like umami. The, yeah, umami, umami kind of thing. So don't sieve it out. Okay, so I'm going to grab a, uh, a sieve to quickly. Oh, okay. Sorry, let me check the comments. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so we have a Mabel, she's like, uh, hmm. looks like I've been stingy with my red wine all this while. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of um, 
like miss um, I wouldn't say mistakes, but rather when people start cooking, right? They don't cook out the wine enough, and then mm. the, and then there's like a bit of a bitter taste. Ooh, so okay. you need to ensure that you cook out the wine enough. And one way of uh, checking that the wine has been deglazed correctly is that the volume of the water in the recipe drops. Yeah. So if you like red wine, you can buy a big bottle or two, use some in his, uh, in oh, cooking, yeah. and the rest, of course, pair with the cottage pie. Correct. Right? Yes, buy Australian red. Australian red goes well with Australian. All right. So I'm blitzing the Chinese porcini mushrooms <laughs> in the thermal mix. Yes, we're elevating it, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Bring some really, you want to, of course, if you live in so if you live in Italy, of course, use the Italian porcini mushroom. But we live in Singapore, right? China is closer and it's cheaper. So thanks to Melissa. So literally, it just took three seconds. Uh, I'm not kidding. I did this live. And let's look at how fine it is now. Yeah. yeah. Of so, course, you can also chop it by hand. Yeah, I'll put it into a blender. It's a uh, food processor, a big one. Yes. Okay, I think we are almost there. Not quite there yet. I will just amp up the heat <laughs> so they'll be faster. So Celeste saying that, yeah, I, she thought so too. She really didn't dare to put so much red wine. Yeah. But as if you cook through, cook it through enough time, it's okay. You won't really have the alcohol, the bitter taste. All right. Okay, well, not, as you can notice, right, I haven't seasoned it yet because I want to wait until the very end. Then I will add seasoning. But this recipe has been calibrated such that you don't need to uh, meddle too much with the seasoning. Really. Okay. Which is great because sometimes, right, if there's too much seasoning, I always forget. So it's great that the seasoning is in the stock and everything is done. So Correct. you won't be have to, have to worry too much about seasoning. Okay, we are halfway. I think we lost the volume already. Mm. Okay, so now okay, I'm going to show you the close-up again. See, you can see the bottom of the pan. Yes. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is add our tiny chopped mushrooms. We so much hidden vegetables here. Agree. It's almost making like uh, in Chinese, right? It reminds ah. me of how to make the jiaozi dumpling oh, filling, right. jiaozi xie, especially the su, the vegetarian type. Hmm. The mushroom can do so much, and also ah, uh, the earthiness of mushroom also brings out the beef flavor better. Right. So a lot of time, my mushrooms and and meat, right? Like if you go to a steakhouse, they often uh offer you different type of sauces. Of course, you have red wine sauces, you have mushroom sauce. So today, this sauce has, oh, wow, both <laughs> mushroom and red wine. So you see, uh, once I add the dried mushrooms, it's very dry already. But don't worry, because I'm adding in stock later on. And again, mushrooms have water, so the water will come out. Okay, so I added the mushrooms in already. My next step is to add in the other seasoning ingredients, such as the tomato passata, yes. the ketchup, the Worcestershire sauce, the mm. soy sauce, and the nori sheets. Okay, okay. so I'm going to prepare that. Let me bring those over to you. Ketchup. Nori and sheets. How much of each do we put in? Let me refer to my recipe again. Nori so, sheets. ketchup is two tablespoons. Uh, the nori sheet was here. I, I, wait, I hang on. Uh. It is inside. Oh, okay, yes. Can you see it here? Oh no, it's here. Okay. Wait, hang on. Later I will just looking for some ingredients. Two tablespoons. Yes. The BB Go Nori, where is it? Ah? Um, no, this is pistachio. Just now I brought it. It's in a, it should be in a bag. What color is the packaging? Uh, it says BB Go. BB Go. Okay. Yeah, it's the Korean one. But never mind, I, I have an alternative also. Oh, it's here, it's here, it's here. Oh, it's, it's here. at the bottom of the bag. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so I'm using this. You can use nori sheets as well, but I wanted to get a nori cakes uh, this time because it will incorporate very evenly. Because these are little shreds, right? So they incorporate very evenly into the mixture. Yeah, I put in my tomato sauce ready. Now I have to concentrate so that I don't double food. Okay. Okay, so two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Yes, right here. Okay, so just any generic one will do. No worries. Yes. Melissa, can you pronounce the name again? I always struggle. Worcestershire. 
Worcestershire. It's an English sauce, is it? Yeah, I think so. But like the popular brand is the Leia and Perrin's one. I don't have it on hand. So I'm just using a generic. Please tell us if we butcher any name, okay? Yeah. We try our best. <laughs> okay, how lot then? Um, soy sauce? Yes. So my soy sauce is it's, that one. Yes. Ooh, okay. it looks special, the soy yeah, sauce. Yeah, it's a special one. I have a few favorites. Uh. There's also, by the way, a... Uh, uh, off topic, but there's a very nice soy sauce that you can find at Media. It's a yuzu soy sauce. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Or the kind of like with uh, daishi, right? Some soy sauce also yeah. Japanese one daishi, that's like yeah. extra flavor. We have a question from Mabel. Mm. Why do we need the seaweed? Because uh, it adds a layer of umami. So it's again umami here. We have umami from mushrooms. Yeah. We have umami from um, uh, the seaweed. Yeah. And then, but then if you want to omit it and make a very traditional one, no worries at all. Yes. Okay, then um, let's go with the beef stock ready. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Melissa, we have a question. Will you keep this live in your, for your IGTV? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, so what, uh, I might not keep the live on the IGTV because... Um, I, 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 what I will do is actually because the, the whole video is going to be quite long, right? It's more than an hour, an hour. So what I will be doing is actually um, uploading the recipe uh, and the procedure at some point. But I really recommend that you stay because there are some hints and hacks that I'll be sharing along the way that are not in the, in the written recipes. And in fact, I'm going to share one with you right now. So the recipe calls for 500 ml of beef stock, right? Which is like the generic one that you can find, which is like this. But a hack that I use to add flavor and make sure that the stock doesn't taste too generic is go to Hai Pi Lao or go to Beauty in a Pot, tap out the stock. Because uh -huh. when, you, when you have steamboat and you cook all your meats inside, it's, uh, it's really additional flavor already. Yeah, so this was the tomato, tomato stock from Hai Pi Lao. That I, went, I went to Hai Pi Lao like four days ago. Yeah. Yeah. So my Melissa shared this. I thought was so smart because you always wonder, right? You know, they have the store that will just throw away the stock, which they put hours and tons of ingredients, yeah. right, to cook. So if you tap out home, right, of course, then you can use it for another dish and also right. reduce waste at the same time. All right. Okay. So let's pour in almost everything, not okay. everything. Wow. Okay, so oh, oops. sorry, sorry. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. We'll I just let it evaporate. I really want a lot of stock. <laughs> Okay, so now we'll let it simmer. Yes, so let then me show you now how it looks like in the pan. I'm going to add my nori sheets. My nori yes. is... Yes, uh, so it's so boi boiling. There. Okay, now the flavor is actually what you smell, the aroma, right? Yeah. It's really quite diverse. Yeah. It's, like you say, because this recipe is all about layer yeah. layering. Yeah. And as you add the ingredients step by step and the sauce, Correct. that's really now the... Um, the flavor is very diverse. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. In Chinese, we'll say <laughs> sophisticated. Sophisticated. Mm. So I haven't added the mince in yet, but you can see how generous and chunky this is. So yes. if you want to keep your dish vegetarian, which I don't recommend because obviously the beef from uh, the meat club is so good. But if you do want to keep it vegetarian, you can not add the meat oh, at this stage. Actually, uh, the meat club also has oh, yeah, vegetarian have... patty also. I yeah. bought, I tried some. So if you want to do vegetarian dish, you can also try. Of course, who can resist this beef, right? Okay, excuse mm. me. I'm going to taste it, yeah. Mm. You want to taste? I'll give you a tasting spoon. Yes. That's the best part of hosting, right? I haven't even added the... I haven't even added the, the beef yet. Just... Are we good for time, by the way? How much time has passed? 40 minutes. 40 minutes, okay. So we should be almost done already with this. Mm. Wow. Actually, yeah, without any salt, right? When I, um, it's already, the tomatoes definitely come out of the acidity, very fresh. And then yeah. you have the My induction mushroom. suddenly hang. Oops. So I put in the beef first. Key step. Wow, look at that, man. <laughs> yeah. I feel so happy. Like, it's really a dish, you know, for 
a big dish, right? You know, okay. when you have people over right. or you want to have a nice uh, meal to reward yourself after a long week. Yeah. And if you're lazy, what you can do is actually uh, put it in the cast iron, pipe your potatoes at the top, straight away put in the oven. Oh. Don't need to wash anything. Sure. Okay? Yeah, we're going to do that, right? Uh, I'm going to do an individual portion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, it's really good for meal prep also. Yeah. If you can do that in individual portion, or you can even bring it to your friends or colleagues, right? Hey, hey, and then they can just right, then bring receive. home. Uh, yeah. So I would love to receive such gift. <laughs> it's a hint. Yes. Maybe it's a good idea. Home, yeah. the individual. Okay, so uh, let, let it simmer for a bit more before we put it in the oven for our final bit. And yes. I'll walk you through the uh, mashed potato as well. Okay. I mean, you guys have cooked mashed potato before, right? You have, right? Yes, so, we have the recipe, also, mashed potato recipe also on your right. Just mm, time, yeah. Okay, so the mashed potato recipe is essentially 750 grams of potatoes, 100 grams of uh, fresh grated Parmesan cheese, six tablespoons of milk. Oh, I memorized really. And salt and pepper to taste. Yeah, so what you do is uh, boil the potatoes in salt water until they are... Mm. Until they are like uh, crumbly ready. Yes. I have the ready... Uh, the just finished boiling potatoes just to show you. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's inside the plastic bag, but yep. just squeezing it through the plastic bag. Yeah, I can show you. You can see they are really soft. It's a bit like the uh, potatoes like in curry, the kind of texture. A bit softer than that. A bit softer. Mm. So that when I press it, see? Oh it yeah, it, it, it really mesh. Yeah, like, correct. This then is a fun activity to do with kids. Yes. Like, <laughs> mash potatoes. And then I will actually um, add the cheese and my seasonings and my milk. Mm. And then we are done. And then what we have is this. So to dress up your cottage pie, right? Um, you have two options. Okay, one option is to just do it the rustic way. The other option is to just put it elegantly and then use your fork to create ridges. Yes. On the surface. Yeah. And then the last way, which is the most uh sophisticated way, is to pipe it. So you pipe it, then there will be like little swirls at the top. Yes. Which one are we going to do today? Which one do you want? One is just put it on top. Yeah. Two is you put it and then you use the fork to do the pattern. You can do the fork piping. and the piping. And we do the fork first then because everybody has a fork at home, right? Yeah, I think we can do the fork one. Yeah, yeah. I also want to learn. How is... Okay. Oh, oh we have answer. Sorry. Ah. Easier fork. fork. Easier, ah? yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Celeste. How is Raymond and Cece doing? <laughs> Which step are you at? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Mm, super rich and no need. Okay, I want to test. It is. So, um, Ooh, now has meat. Just yeah. now didn't. Ooh. Wow. Can I eat like this? Can. You can. I can eat like this with rice. But this is a very, so I can taste uh, one shot ready right there. Mm. It's a very lean minced beef. Wow. You can mix it with fatty beef also, can, but Good thing about this is that it's healthy. It's, it's, it's really good. You can taste like, you know, the, the lean, the protein. Um, yes, maybe also it's good, right? Because you didn't have, now you have to test so, so that you know if you want to add salt or pepper, it's now. Hmm. But do you want to add salt? A little bit, yeah. Okay, just a bit. Because the salt actually then can bring out more flavor. So yeah, seasoning is a very, very personal uh, preference kind of thing. That's why I don't really... I put always salt to taste or pepper to taste. Mm. We're using Himalayan pink salt. Um, I Doesn't just... smell. I just smell for fun. <laughs> Maybe start with a teaspoon first, lah, because okay. it's a big batch in anyway, yes. so it should be okay. Wow. Okay. I'm going to preheat my oven. By the way, what does the recipe oh, call? Yes. Is it 170? Let me check. Okay, so I just check here. This is the recipe, and um, oops, it's hundred seventy degrees. Yes, right. yes. Okay, and then we'll bake it in twenty twenty five minutes. Yeah. So we can now. So we can move on to our. So you can just type then. cottage on your right and. The first result is this recipe. 
So this is quite about there. Okay. It is done. We're going to show you. Now we're going to put it into individual portions. Okay. I'm going to set two. the big function for 170 at 20 minutes. This is a very good uh, appliance, by the way. Ninja is not paying me to say this, but it really is very good. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, then you can see close-ups. Yes. Then you, you see there's some gravy, right? Over yes. here. At the, so, you can choose to make it how wet you want mm. or how dry you want. It's up to you. Mm. And also, this recipe is very versatile because the mesh, you want a, the mesh to meat ratio, you can also customize. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, so uh, do you if want you do want to do keto, right? Then no uh, need the, <laughs> the potato. This is it. Correct. Full meat. And then you want it even more rich, right? Huh. You can put uh shredded uh, mozzarella or whatever. Oh yes. You want? Oh. You want? Because we have, have extra. Okay, okay, okay. I'm so sorry, huh? yes. What's good is we have individual portions, so we can try different versions. We can have the meat and cheese one as like keto version. <laughs> So basically, for a very, very decadent version, you just uh, put your mozzarella. Okay. okay. It's about a tablespoon. Okay. I don't want to use my fingers to touch it. That's why I'm just... Okay. After that, I will just layer the potatoes at the top. Okay. So mm -hmm. I will do one, oh. then Sin Yen will do the rest. Wow. Okay. I'll try out. Very easy one. If you saw how I did the curry puff, I mean. <laughs> it's super easy. Like seriously, okay. So, so do we have a question? Okay. For me personally, I like to do two third is to one third. Two third of uh, proteins at the bottom and then one third of the mesh. Sorry, see, we just got activated and hide my camera for two seconds. Do you all oh. have, does this happen often? For what? <laughs> like Siri or Google just like, oh, yeah. This Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Just off senior. Hmm? Do we have a question? Let's see. So, we will just uh, even out the surface. So, when, yeah, when you make it individually, you can actually store it. Wow. Hmm. Such a... So soft, the mashed potato. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead. And so it's actually flat, um, it's just because my camera has shadow, so you may think it's like a dome node, but it's flat. It's super easy, yeah. Uh. See? Ah. Yeah. So it's just literally like that. Yes. Then if you want like more, let's go this way. Ooh. And if you do meal prep, right, is it you let it cool or freeze now? Or ah yes. Yes, indeed. Okay, so yeah, if you make a, a lot, right, and not you're going to eat it all today, yeah. you can start to let it cool and then put it in the freezer. Okay, I, I put this in the oven first. Sinia, okay. you want to do the other one, you can. Okay, I, at right first here. I follow you to so they see how it's... So this is the oven. So it's perfect for individual servings. And you see how fast it took to preheat? If you use a regular oven, it's going to take super long. So this is good for... Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. okay. So, so let me just remove this and then I get started with the tacos. Yes, well, I'm going to continue this okay, you making can... individual portions. Tell me what percentage you like between the meat and the potato. I try to be <laughs> as accurate as possible, but I might just put a lot of meat because I love meat. Okay. Wow, it smells so good there, seriously. Yes. That's I want to praise space. myself, but it really does <laughs> yeah. No, no, don't, don't, don't be humble. <laughs> Master chef level dishes mm -hmm. right right here, right here. Okay, so um what do we I have just, next? Eh? We have the this tacos. Let me tie my hair, it's a bit hot. Yes, let's drink oh. water too. Oof. Yeah. <sighs> We're halfway, more than halfway. Actually, not bad. Yeah. Less than one hour, finish one dish. Mm. This one is quite fast, the like quesadilla. Okay, so Yes, because the idea is more like, okay, you want to like, um, someone's coming last minute or, you know, you're like, okay, I want to, don't want to do steak, you know, just a grilled steak. Mm. It's a really great way to have protein and carbs all in one. Mm. And of course, the sauces are great and all the ingredients are very easy to be, to be found. Correct. So now is the talking part uh, so that we can take a break.
also. Uh, I will walk you through this, this particular part of the recipe, which I really, really love. Mm -hmm. It's the tomato and garlic confit oil. You can see. So this, right, this recipe, why I love it and why I think it's such a keeper is because it's very versatile. I'm going to use this to season, uh, marinate the beef. But apart from that, I'll actually, this is uh, really nice because you can actually make a pasta, like an oil-based pasta sauce out of it. And as you can see over here, uh, it's so smooth and luscious. I can actually spread it on garlic as well. Uh, sorry, I spread it on bread as well, sourdough. So it's like my version of garlic bread. So this is a condiment that you can make in bulk, okay, and then uh, store it in the fridge. So just to let you know, because I made this in advance, so I have to walk you through the steps of the recipe. Um, do you mind actually flashing the quesadilla res uh, recipe over here so I can walk them through? Okay, so first, um, why, why it takes one day in advance is because we want all the flavors to melt together and infuse together inside the fridge. So what I'll do is start with my chili paddy. I will dry roast my chili paddy on a pan along with my peppercorns and oregano. And then uh, it's up to you, by the way, how spicy you want this oil to be. If you want it spicy, then you keep it with uh, the seeds. If not, discard the seeds. In this case, I'm discarding the seeds. Mm. Yeah. And then I'll grind everything and dry fry again until fragrant for the, again, once again, the chili paddy and the peppers and the oregano. Yes. Then I'll add in my olive oil and my minced garlic. So uh, it's 125 uh, ml of olive oil and how much minced garlic? I think seven whole uh, Clo Clo fragrant garlic cloves. So if you're using like the traditional garlic times two or times three, because uh, the bulb is like equivalent to three. Ma. Yeah, so, okay. So after that, um, wow. yeah, so we will... Um, Again, on a heavy bottom saucepan with our olive oil, add our minced garlic. And once the garlic becomes golden brown and the fragrances come out, that's when we add our orange juice and tomato. So that's like the secret ingredient, I would say, orange juice. Because nobody would expect an orange juice inside like a, a sauce like this, right? Yes. Yeah. But take note, uh, to use fresh, freshly <laughs> squeezed orange, don't buy the pure fresh one and put in because it'll be too sugary. Okay. Orange juice, uh, by the way, for this recipe, uh, you can see on my IG, uh, IG Live, but for those on Zoom, you can check on the Your Right app as well. It's half, a, half an orange, by the way, with the pulp. Okay. Okay. Then after that, I will actually uh, start to combine and add my tomatoes at this point. So I add until all the tomatoes have been softened. So uh, I cook for about one third cup full of cherry tomatoes. And then finally, I blend it all together in a food processor, uh, just pulse it basically because you don't want it to become like too much of a, you don't want it to become a juice or anything. But one point to know about this recipe is number one, make it in advance, one day in advance. Number two um, is when I, you have to slow, you have to be patient about this recipe. When you cook out your garlic and when you cook out your um, tomatoes, you don't want to use high heat because you don't want to burn your garlic. So just to give you a close up, after cooking, right, it should look like this. Yeah, so don't burn your garlic. And uh, finally, one last tip is when you add the orange juice, again, water and oil are not the best of friends. You don't want to have an accident inside the kitchen. So make sure that your oil mixture is not bubbling when you pour it in. Just be careful about that. Okay? And then we place it in the fridge until it's ready to use. You want to taste it now, by the way? Because I love this so much. Taste it and tell everyone what you think about it. Sure. I'm going to do a quick check. Very good. It's looking good. Okay. Cheers. Mmm. It's so it's like kind of a deep actually. Uh like you know garlic aioli, kind of mayonnaise type, but it's oil based. Mm. Um you can't taste the orange, don't worry, like not like sweet. Yeah, cannot taste. Yeah. So it's very it's probably yeah, more the acidity a bit, uh, bit a bit of fresher. Yeah. Okay. Definitely good. I can imagine it on like pizza or Correct, type. correct. Okay, of course, so, it's going to complement the beef also that we're going to uh, use. Okay, so I'm just retrieving the beef right now. Again, you have two options. You have the stir-fry strips and you have the eye filet. But uh, Sinian's favourite is, of course, the eye filet. Yes, please. So really. we're going to use that today. It's very versatile. The taste is so good. Um, like the thickness, right? And then you can use it like you just simple grill it. Yeah. 
or you can make it into skewer. You can also make it into like wrap. Yeah. So good. So do you have any questions about steak before I start? Oh, yes, uh, please. Are you guys advanced steak uh, makers? Do you have a favorite way of doing it? So today's recipe is a very, very simple way of doing the steak. I'm not going to go into reverse searing, uh, but my preferred method is reverse searing, not using sous vide, but using the oven. And uh, your best friend over here for reverse searing method would be this, the probe thermometer. Mm. Instantly probe thermometer, poke it through your protein. And uh, my favorite way of doing it is medium rare, of course. So your internal temperature should end up at about 63 degrees Celsius, 63 to 65 degrees Celsius. Yes. Um, I have a very comprehensive cheat sheet yes. uh, that was done in collaboration with Yorab as well. Um, and if you drop me a DM after the class or just drop me a follow, I'll be happy to share that with you. But to go into detail about this is a bit difficult. Lah. So we will do the most basic way of kind of uh, par frying it on the pan. Then after that... Yes, it's still really good and easy. And the, problem, the thing is that we want to teach you things that you can do anytime. Yeah. And not to worry about, oh, you know. But of course, uh, some sometimes you want to you know, try out some of the new techniques fancy. and see fancy, yes. And say, oh, chef can do it. I, also, I can also do it. yes. Yeah. But now we're going to do it really fail-proof. Yeah, things that you can... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... Can it? So, you can see this... Um, yeah. I fillet. This is about 200, 200 grams. Yeah. Just want to have to cut it deeper. Okay. Uh, how many grams does my recipe call for? Can we... Uh, yeah. Let me have a quick chat. Cut into three pieces, right? So I'm going to... I want to use gloves for this actually. 500 grams. So it's about also two and a half. But we can use... Two lah. Two, yeah. yeah. We just use two. Okay. Because I only have two or so. So... So if you want to find out all Melissa's recipes, right, that she has shared on your right, also, when you go to the cottage pie, right, do you see her name? Call me. Melissa. Okay. You can just click on it. Do you mind helping me cut the other piece, please? I need Thank to you show. So wait, wait. I need to show. So I, I click on it, and then you can see all the posts. Okay, let's put the other one in also. Oh, wait, let's show right. them how the... Cottage pie is looking so Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Commercial break. I'll show you how the cottage pie looks so far. Oh, this is the okay. beef steak preview. This is what we are making now. Yeah. Preview. We are about halfway there. <laughs> are you drooling? I am. Okay. So I'm going to have to cut uh, these into three pieces. And then okay. I will further cut them later on. So. Quick. So, Ooh, so fast. Okay, Sinyan, I have a quiz for you. Ooh. When you cut your beef steak, do you cut along the grain or against the grain? Oh, no! Oh, this is so confusing. <laughs> what do you think? Guys, yeah, uh, you want to answer? Yes, help me, help us. me. Ooh. Okay, how good. Thank you. Okay. How nice this. No one is helping me? Oh, no. Okay, so, so I, again, the question, Melissa. I think when you uh, cut yeah, steak, it's against the grain. Okay, but then uh, uh, one thing that you uh, that is really good about this brand that I realized for everyday cooking is that uh, the amount of fat in it is really quite a lean piece of beef. You don't see much marbling. Yes. So uh, uh, you want to go for like the marbling effect if you're getting the very, very expensive ones like Wagyu. But I think for everyday cooking, you want to be relatively healthier. So just go with... Uh, just go with your, I mean, it's better to get a healthier and leaner cut, basically. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Uh, so really, actually, okay. you uh. can see as, as Melissa was cutting, right, the, the beef, look at it. Yeah, it's really, okay. the why I like this cut so much is so because there's nothing like, you know, veins or things like half, Yay, half, half fiber. Right la, against, and he's, he's tuned in. So thank you. He's a pro chef as well, quite pro, eh? so... Go, go and look at his IG and... Uh, Ruben, right? Yeah. Yes. I think he did a recipe as well for the meat club. That's right. Check out Ruben's recipe. Just search for his name in your app. Okay, so for this one, I need to season it beforehand. And my personal uh, proportion is about one teaspoon to one filet of steak. And one filet is about what, 200 grams, right? So just one teaspoon. And then we have two. So oh, I just sorry. rub it across both sides now, basically. So I need two teaspoons. Okay, uh, I have to use my hands, uh, my makeshift gloves here because I don't want to contaminate my hands. 
massage time. Whoa. So this one didn't touch anything. I can go in again. Wow. I use pink Himalayan salt. Yeah, so lean so it's good because sometimes when you buy stick, right? Then you have to cut off, you know, the tree made and all this. This one you don't need, you just open the pack and you can use yeah, everything. Yeah. So some pepper as well. Yes. So and then pepper. I'll take off my jacket. It's very hot. We also have some herbs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also. Okay. So uh you want to add more layer to your dish, uh, your meat, and make it taste more sophisticated, there are a few options. Okay. One option I have for you, which is available over the shelf, is uh, I think at specialty groceries. Melbourne is very famous for their sea salt, but um, this is the smoked version that I highly recommend that you try. Good to know. Okay, so I'm going to put some pepper so Yes. That's my next step to uh, cook it right on the pan. Hey, wait, uh, I forgot to continue this. Oh, yeah. We'll... yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so um, I don't need the scale at this point, so I'm going to put it aside. Okay, so. Okay, we're going to dry fry. No, that's the no, that was the, the process for this. So the one that we are gonna um okay, and then I have my onion as well, by the way. But later on I'll do the onion. So first I will uh cook my steak or rather pa cook it. Because later on when I make my quesadilla and further slice through it, um I'm gonna cook it again. Mm. So yeah, this should be slightly under your preferred level of doneness. So I'm going to shoot for a medium in this case. Okay, so to cook steak, the most basic pan method, okay, is to actually add butter. Add butter. And I'm using only the best, L and beer. How, uh, what heat do you want the pan to be? Uh, high heat. So you want to wait until the smoke uh, comes out of the pan okay. before you... Yes, very important. Sometimes we are afraid, oh, you know, if the pan is too hot, will we burn the steak? This is wrong thinking. We want the pan to be smoking hot, which means seeing smoke coming out from the pan. Yeah. And there's a lot of debate also, by the way, about um, whether you want to flip your steaks on the pan or you want to like uh, flip it or you just leave it side and you flip it once. There's a lot of debate on this subject. So uh, just find your preferred method. And my advice is to... Uh, start off with a cheaper cut of meat, which actually, uh, Meat Club obviously has very, very affordable beefs as yes. well. So it's a great place for you to practice on. And then uh, move on, yeah. But the most important thing I would say, uh, the, the whole debate about flipping and whatnot is irrelevant because uh, the most important thing is the internal temperature. Okay, yeah. you, so can, you can feel the heat already. I'm standing near one. the pan, right? You can start to feel the heat. Yes, it's time to drop in. The butter! So I'm going to flavor the butter with rosemary. Okay. This one? Yeah. Just put it in. Just chuck the whole the, the, oh, yeah, okay. the whole thing. I'm going to discard. Yes. And then my... Oh, wow. Well, it smells yeah. heavenly. Butter in a pan. You can see the smoke coming up. Yes. Yeah. And then chefs usually like to... They don't like to cook steak on induction. Uh. They like to do it on the open fire. Mm. But then it's okay, I think, it's, as long as you use high heat. Okay. And then we want to wait until the butter is slightly brown. Yes. So that there's that brown butter. Ooh, the rosemary aroma is... Rosemary brown butter kind of uh, effect. Which is... Uh, in French, is the burn... You can speak Ber Ber noisette. Yes. Okay. I think it should be good. It's browning with the butter. Yes. I will reduce the yeah, heat. Yeah, reduce slightly. the heat. Slightly, you need, huh? Slightly. Very key. Okay. In goes the steak. Ooh. And then you wanna baste it. I mean, you don't baste also okay, lah. But do you guys know what's basting, right? No, don't know. Just uh, take the spoon and then ah. uh, very quickly kind of smother it. Yeah, do this and you really feel like a master chef. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then uh, one, more, one more point to note is this hat. 
Because if you already have a timer, just time it so you have an idea of how long you spend on one side already. Again, this is quite thick, but not to worry. We're so not, beautiful. We don't want to cook it too because uh, we're going to go for one more cook later on. I have to check on this because this oven is quite strong. It is really done already. Almost done. I think two more minutes and it's done. Okay. Okay. So we wait until the surface turns quite brown or seared. Anyway, I have so many pieces inside, so the base thing is not that effective. I will just leave it to cook first. Wow, I'm getting hungry now. Are you? And this steak like today also is really good if you want to use for like sandwich, to do steak sandwich. I think that's Ruben's recipe, right? Hmm. With onion sauce. Uh, one more thing about steaks or novices is that after you're done with your steak, you have to rest it. Don't, don't uh, immediately... Yeah, so the timer was one minute and five seconds. Yeah, I just put one minute and five first. I checked. Ah, you see? Wow. It's a nice here already. Yes. You all can see. So I'm going to flip it. And then go for another one minute. Okay, so if you're making a traditional steak, these things don't discard. Like all these uh, deep pieces don't discard, you can make a jus out of it. So just to walk you through it, um, there's a wine-based one and a cream-based one up to you. So again, same step, leave all the juices. Okay, then I add, I deglaze it with my wine or I add cream, garlic, whatever, uh, truffle paste. Truffle paste, cream, uh, gravy is my favorite. But yeah, then after that, uh, yeah, you have your very quick and easy pan juice. No, yeah. I'm surprised there's no question coming on how to cook steak. This is a steak masterclass, don't be shy. But this is really a baby level steak thing. There's a lot to, that goes into it uh, when it comes to making. But uh, one more tip that I want to impart to you is uh, always don't follow the formula. Like if you ask for my cheat sheet, there's a formula. But the formula is based on a steak thickness that I think is about 3 cm thick. Mm. So uh, the timing and stuff like that varies based on how thick your, your meat is. Yeah, so if it's obviously by logic, right? If it's too thick, then you need a longer time. If it's not too thick, then proper time will do. Okay, so let me go ahead and give it a rest. But I will sacrifice one piece just to cut and see through whether how is it. Again, I'm not expecting it to be cooked all the way through. See, it's still quite rare, but it's okay because later on I'm gonna slice it quite thinly and then um and then cook it again in the case of the year. Yeah. But just for the end that was the thickest cut. So the rest should like be quite blue, okay. rare. Can I eat it? Huh? No, cannot. Okay. Wait first. Okay. <laughs> okay la, let's give it another maybe 30 seconds or 40 seconds. Okay, so now let me check on this. This is perfect ready. Check it out. Okay, I'm going to... Ta -da! Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, never mind. For the benefit of everyone, I will just use my... We're going to bring out yes my gloves okay so there you go i put it on my thing yes hello it's very very hot okay so this is yes. um do we let it yeah, yeah, correct. So, otherwise, it will continue to get cooked. Yes, but whilst letting it rest, this is my next hack okay. for you guys. This is when I'm going to put in the garlic tomato confit okay. oil. Okay. 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 So, put this in thing. it goes. Actually, no, I have to actually slice it first. I okay. So I'm going to demo uh, one, one piece and then uh, Sydney and Ken do the rest while I prepare the other 
parts of the oh my god it's my honor <laughs> to slice okay, the steak you can discard no worries then you just slice it yes yeah so you want to go for like not too thick you want to go for like thin enough so that it doesn't but not too so again thin. you see you can see how it's like medium right. medium it actually is a good medium really so you should be good just slightly pink in the center. It's perfect. Yeah. So uh, I'm not very... So for, for this kind of cooking, right, you really need to go by feel. Or you can use this also to poke it through. But um, that's why I really prefer the reverse seal method because it's much more reliable. So this is the thickness that you want to go. Any questions? No. Okay. okay. I think you are so, enjoying the steak, right? Okay. Sinian, so you can go for the okay. rest. I'm going. In. Okay, let me just put the butter in the fridge. And first. I also cook the other one also. Since we are here. Good for time. Da -da. Okay. Wow. And then uh okay, so we slide over there. So okay. again. Wow, cut so smoothly. Is E. Okay, walking them through the next bit. All I need to do essentially is to just make my cheese mixture. Uh, I just need QP mayo basically. Where's my QP mayo? Ah, there. The drawer. Oh, okay. I'll grab some QP mayo. This is a two cheese mix. So I've already mixed in advance uh, mozzarella as well as uh, cheddar, red cheddar cheese. Okay. Wow, so lean, so good. Okay, just excuse me for a bit whilst I get the QP mayo. It, the meat looks so, 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 so tender. Oh, perfect. I have an open oh, one. Should I cut like this or like against this? The green, against the grain. Uh, like uh, diagonal? Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. Apprentice Sing Yen. One tablespoon. So the ratio is as follows. One tablespoon of QP mayo to a quarter cup of um, red cheddar and quarter cup of mozzarella. So this is an additional layer of richness to your tacos. I'm trying to resist from taking a bite of the steak. Of your quesadilla, I mean. <laughs> I just add more. No, of more. the steak that I'm slicing. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so um, we're done with this. It's literally. And then now we're going to make our very quick and easy salsa for that layer of acidity. <clears throat> So for salsa, what do we need? We need our cilantro, which is right here. Cilantro. Uh, don't use the stock, just use the leaf. So we have eight stalks worth. Where was my tomato? I think it was... Where's the meat chop back? Ah, there. Oh, here. Okay, I'm almost done. Ta -da. It's up the eye delay. Okay, again, uh, video magic. I've already prepared. Otherwise, it will take super long. My tomatoes, my cherry tomatoes, which is in the recipe as well. Ta -da. Mm. Is it one third of a lime or is it a whole lime in my recipe? Sorry, I didn't memorize that part. One piece, okay. One piece of lime for my onions. Which I will chop. Okay, all good. So uh, whilst this is resting, we are making the salsa, we're making, uh, we've already made this. We've made the mayo mixture as well. So again, it's a very efficient recipe because you multitask. Oof. How's everyone doing? 
thumbs up. Mama, I'll give you a wins question. Mm. Raymond's drinking wine. Cheers. I, I wish to... <laughs> Who's following along? Uh? Those who are following along, is it easy for them? Okay for them? Actually, it's quite challenging to follow along, I would imagine, because a lot of the things are pre-made. Really. Hi, Cece. Hi, Cece. What's up? Hello. This is Cece. This is Raymond. Hi. How are you? How are you? The cottage pies. Oh, wow. Oh, I can see the steak. Nice. Mm, really, and nice, nice. It looks like a handsome... Oh my God. Yeah. If you follow along already, right, the best reward is the, the, the sumptuous meal, yeah, later after this. Oh, this is the mashed potato. Nice. A bit more um, milk in there, make it a bit softer. Hey, you haven't tried it. I, I still haven't tried it yet. You want to try it? Oh, that's the, this the, the right, the, for the cottage, the means. Oh, wow. I like that you cut your carrot a bit bigger. It's actually really, it's pretty, so it's, more it's pretty, like rustic, uh, yeah. more rustic style, yeah, yeah countryside. Yeah. Okay, um, so, so oh, we have someone trying to enter. Senior, you want to try the cottage pie? Yes, Let yes. know how. Yes, yes. Okay, there. Ah, my hands are scared. I, I, know, I, I will find a spoon, don't worry. Okay. Yes. Okay, I have honor and right the pleasure. In. So this is like working so hard and I'm, I'm going to taste the cottage pie. Nama, I will, have, I will sneak in a bite. I'll, I'll feed you first. I purposely haven't, I haven't had my lunch yet because I want to... Sneak some bites of this. Okay, I'll take the most. Do you like more the... the Never mind, the... No, 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 I, okay. <sighs> you know, not to burn myself, I'm going to let it... So I'm just cool. going to add my lime juice in. Very easy. Nothing much to it. <sighs> Okay, the first is you smell actually like just the a bit of the potato, then the meat flavor comes to you and it lasts. How is it? Eh? Not yet, not yet. Oh, not yet. <laughs> I don't want to burn myself. Mm. Wow. And I think, yeah, you can, you can see the cheese as well. Oh, lush. Yes, okay. Okay. I'm still very hot. Mm. Oh, by the way, by, uh, whilst the meats are resting, you can put your, your garlic confit inside to marinate it. It's so good. Very good? Yes. Okay, she's distracted. Really. Never mind. I will do the mm. garlic confit. Mm. You can see the cheese. Okay. Wow. Are you going to try this at home yourself? Of course. Okay, very good. So, um, I'm going to dress the steak up with my oil. So, just eyeball it and then toss it. Sorry, I need to work. I need to show you. And that was something like this. So, basically, the elements are the cheese. My salsa right here, and then of course our mayo and the tortillas. Yeah, mayo is right here. Okay, so all set. Oh, it's Just really like to... a bite of this really brings out like appetite. Like it's so fr uh, flavorful. I wanna make it more rich, okay? I don't know. Ooh, yes, yes. Yeah. And then I put this in the... So these are the tricks the chef use for cohesion. Across different elements, right? It's still the dish still tastes cohesive because they, they put certain of the same things, common denominators into each element. I see. How to be a chef. Chef's tricks. Okay, this is where I sneak a bite, just to see if it's overly seasoned under or just nice. Wow, steak bites look so good. Mm. 
Mm. Nice. Wash my hands first. So, uh, what's next? We assemble. Yes. But before that, I want to take, take a bite. Please, of please. Food. Oh, look at that. Close up. Can you see the steam? Yeah. Hmm. <gasps> It's yummy. Okay, so um, very we're very happy with our work. We hope you are too. Okay, so now we assemble. Yes. So, so let's get our mission wraps. Our wraps, our wraps, our wraps. You can also make this from scratch, uh, but uh, we don't have the time to show this to you today. I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Because we want to focus on you know the steak, okay. right? Yeah. So, okay, so do you put the, do you, so, you put, um, can already actually assemble it here, like, no yeah, you want to lightly toast the wrap, I don't want the fire yet, because I want to, uh, okay, so a flat, first. flat pan, yeah, flat surface, and then I put my cheese, oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> okay, just evenly, I mean, just put it as evenly as possible across the surface. Yes. It's fine, it's going to melt paper on anyways. Yes. I think it's really good because the these two recipes, right, both because the, the beef is really lean, right? Mm. Uh, mm. Really uh, good fiber. And then you can put a bit of then the cheese, right? So it doesn't get like overwhelmed. If you use like feather steaks, right? Then maybe, you know, the flavor will be, ah, you know, it's like... Too heavy, right? right? Uh, so we don't want that. We want you to enjoy, right, the the, the meat, and then uh, don't feel that you know. Oh, I can't finish the whole dish. And I think the the salsa also like will help a lot. For sure. Yeah, complement the meat. So colorful. It's super easy. This recipe. You just need extra time for your base sauce. Okay, so um, I will also add just a bit more of this inside. And then layer it with slightly more cheese and then we'll go with the cook ready. Okay, okay, okay. And this looks pretty much good to go. I'm gonna cover it up with one more wrap. Yep. And on my feet. One more wrap. Oh, do -do. Like this? Yeah. Yay. Okay, now I need a like a big spatula. So I can flip it later on. Oh, this is so works. So essentially, the important part about this is just flipping it. You can do two ways. And that's why I chose purposely a pen that has a very narrow rim. Because the heavier the rim, you cannot uh, do the other way, which is to put a plate on it and then turn. So with my timer, I'm just going to do one and a half minutes and then See whether it's cool enough or not. Look, yay. Really nice, juicy, tender steaks. Okay. In this is tortilla done, wrap. Ta -da. This is I can't wait to go back to my cottage pie. <laughs> it's so good because the, the I really like lean uh minced beef. Right. Uh, so everything, you know, it's, it's just, you don't have this aftertaste of like fat or fiber, like, you know, in your mouth. Everything is just so pure and blends together perfectly. And you don't taste too much mushroom. Just not, although we put a lot, but you no, know, it blends uh, really well together. Mm. It's really nice sharing dish where, you know, you can make one and everyone can, right. can eat. And it's quite expensive also, no, to make it, to buy outside. Oh, yes, it so, is. 
Why not just make it? And then never tasted uh, cottage pie so good oh, when really? I buy outside. Yeah. Hey, you heard that or not? She hasn't really, tried really. a better one outside. Yes. Make your own the best. Okay. Okay. So bottom is quite done already. Again, this needs a bit of uh, confidence. Ah. Uh. Woohoo! So a bit came out, but it's okay. Oh, yeah. Just gonna have to manipulate it to the shape that I want again. Okay. And then stuff it back in. So you can see uh, inside it's all melted gooey yes, cheese. Really. You can see. Ooh. Okay, so the more reliable way of doing it is to put a plate on top and then turn the we'll, turn probably, the, we'll do another one, yep. Okay. Just to show you about yes. it. I, I think so we'll just make the Never mind, we have plates, right? This I'll bring up, yeah. yeah. But this is super fast, right? You grate the steak, you slice it, let it rest, make the dressing uh, that you like. Yeah. And then once this also can be made a month, right? Then once everyone's ready to eat, ta -da! let's put up the tortilla, adding the steak, the sauce, the cheese assemble, and then quick two sides. You know it's ready. Done. Yeah, yeah, so you just prepare all the sides and then ooh, ooh, do ooh. it. Uh, on the spot, on the spot. Okay, shall we put it on the display? Yes, yes. Let's do okay, that. let me over. <laughs> Have a <take> here. <laughs> Not using it. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> okay. Oh no! Oh no! Never mind. I will do again. Yes. Oh. Okay. There you go. I think. Because we put a lot of steak and yeah. this is great. This is why steak. you have to slice the steak thinly enough. Still slightly thick, but it's okay. Sorry, it's done by apprentice Sing Yen. Okay. Ooh. So not to worry, I will just slice it a bit thinner whilst I whilst we get ready the next one. Okay, so uh hmm. very fast. I like thick steak, sorry. <laughs> you steak. I, I make, you know, at home the best is because you make according to your own preference, right? Mm. So I slice it quite thick because I like that that bite, you know? The flavor when you when you chew the steak. Right. Yes. Wow. So when you slice it thin, it's easier. Yes, yes. I, sorry, I really should. No if you see all. the picture of the recipe, right? The Melissa shared, yes, it's actually quite thin. Sorry about that. But I'll take this one, no complaint. <laughs> The first one. <laughs> okay, do we have any question? We're going to share about the giveaway. Hmm. So, of course, some of you have been uh, following us and cooking. So, take pictures of what you cook. Follow the Meat Club Facebook and Instagram because they always share nice videos. promotion videos, recipes, right? Uh, and the subscription is really good because then you don't have to worry about, right? What, what's coming. You always get good quality, right? Delivered to your doorstep, always in this. Chiller bag, right? Is the really meat club good. tuned in, by the way? Are they tuned in? Just now, I, I think so. I know um, uh, uh, the team, some of the team say they uh, will join. Uh -huh. So, so um, hi to the team. Yes. Thanks for having... Yeah, and we have a question. Why Australian beef, Ben? Thanks for asking, because they're the best, no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we need to quantify what's, what's best. Of course, I think most of you have been to Australia and know yeah. how good the climate is. Yeah. So, and uh, the meat club also sources directly from the Australian farmers who take great care in the farms, right? About uh, raising the, the, um, the animals, making sure that uh, they eat well, <laughs> they uh, have a great environment. Mm. Uh, and then the whole process of uh, importing uh, the beef as well mm. to Singapore. So make sure that uh, you get um, really fresh. Uh, right. uh, meat and uh, premium quality. Right. Um, so, yeah, for me personally, right, my yes. favorite is Japanese Wagyu. But I have to say that the price performance is something that we all look out for. So, Australian uh, beef is uh, obviously they lead a very happy life. So, happy cow equals to happy meat, uh, yummy meat. So, uh, all of them are grass fed. And I believe the. Uh, I think you have grain, grain yeah, fat too. Range yeah. or so. Yes. Yeah. So, and you can see from the website uh, the pictures of the farm. And I think, yeah, you will understand how happy the animals are and the farmers are also. Yeah, so really... Where did the cheese go? Oh, uh, here. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, I just had an idea sneak up my mind. You know this, right? You can also use it as a filling for your quesadilla or so. Wow. So, yeah, if you're sick of one flavor, then just... 
Okay. Fill it up accordingly. Yes, yeah. be creative. Okay, it's your so kitchen, the rule. We were saying about the giveaway. Yes, you can win um, tea towels mm -hmm. from the meat club. You can see uh, apron, right? apron also, yes. By simply posting pictures of what you cooked and um, tag carnival, uh, Conscious Carnival by mm -hmm. TMC. TMC stands for the meat club. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to go with my dinner. Yes. So yeah, like Manisa said, right, really you choose your Australian beef for its really great quality and it won't hurt your wallet. So you can eat it them regularly. Hmm. And steak is a really good source of nutrition. Uh, iron, Protein. especially for women. Oh my God, like, yeah, you need iron. Yeah. The month especially. <laughs> yes. So if your husband, you want to you wanna avoid your wife having all the PMS, right? Just buy, some, buy her some steak from the yes. Okay. And a dinner of delicious steaks and wine, I don't think it will go wrong. Correct. <laughs> Sauce everything. Oh my god, my phone is so dirty right now. The other phone. Oh, to yeah. like wash it later. Oh, well, yes. There's a steak bite here. Can I eat oh, it? Can eat it. Okay, I'm sneaking a steak bite. <laughs> Why am I whispering? It's like. Mmm. <laughs> my favorite cup. I feel it. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Oh, the sauce is. Mm. Yeah. So you can dress it up however like, oh, the sauce is like. awesome. Right? Very versatile. Wow. Oh, it tastes like the meat has been marinated for like really long. Mm. But it's, it's not right. It's not. Yeah. It was done on the spot. Wow. So good because the sauce just wrap it lightly around the meat. It doesn't, you don't feel mm, that um, it, it's sometimes you know you, you don't want to eat taste too much sauce, not mm, meat, right? Mm, mm, mm. Mm. But this is very flavorful. You taste the steak, yet yeah, you can taste the garlic also in the cilantro. Mm. Okay, so. And I think because um, when it's up pouring like the oil, right? Like for, to, those chef use that to make the jus, it also enhances more beefy, more beef mm, flavors. Correct. If you like beef, do that. Okay, I'm gonna choose the right so plate. So second one. The right plate for this. Maybe this plate should yeah. be good. And if yeah. you're first time, uh, have not bought from the meat club before, you can also use the Welcome 10 offer, which gets the 10% uh, off uh, with $100 worth of purchase. But yeah, I think my favorite promo is still the free means for life. Yes, so you buy, you get lots of great protein plus, you have the means. You can make burger, you can make Stews, you can make cottage pie. You can. Make so I just tried the so cottage many pie cold, cold, and it's still nice. Yes. Yeah. Of course. You made it, Melissa. <laughs> no doubt. And all good ingredients, so definitely yummy. Oh, yeah. I forgot to set my timer. Never mind. I will just uh, check later on. Hey, da -da -da. How long to bake the first dish and what's the degree? Okay, cottage pie, 170 degree for 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah, but check your oven. Huh? Everybody's oven is different. Mm. Ooh, Mabel is saying, good idea to drizzle some truffle oil on yeah, the yeah. cottage pie. Yes. Actually on the steak also, actually. Hey, done Maybe, already. yeah. So again, we flip like that. Wow, okay. beautiful, beautiful so, look. I'm gonna go into the pan now for the last side. Okay, the quesadilla, not Melissa. Quesadilla mm -hmm. <laughs> is going back to the pan. Yay! Mm, yes. Absolutely. So please, yeah, do not be lazy or greedy like me. Please slice the steak a bit thinner. So yeah. that's the quesadilla. We'll hold it shit. Yes. So later on, you just need to use a pizza slicer or a knife to cut through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like crispy, right? So you can cut it. So we have a recipe also with the eye fillet for kimchi. Mm. So if you have like, you know, watch your K-drama, right? <laughs> Excellent to, to go with it. Uh, kimchi, gochujang. Uh, sesame, yeah. Um, okay, we're good. The recipe in Europe. 
Okay, so in this instance, I did a medium high heat for okay. about Do we need one and a half minutes wait, each wait. side. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh! And roll. Teamwork. And voila! Okay. Beef steak quesadilla. Okay, let me show you how to prettify it, okay? Very easy. All you need to do is use the, your ingredients that you used just now. So for instance, I'm just going to cut a wedge of lime. Okay. Need to bring more to the center. Sure. And then throw some salsa. Oh my god. Um, you can also smear it with this if yes. you have a plain plate, but I won't. I'll just let it Wow. In. Then, where's my cilantro leaves? There you are. Wow, 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 wow. I have to cut it open. And I'll just fringe it like that. The leaves. Yes. Was excited too. Try. So who's going to try making quesadilla? It's so easy. Raise though. your hand. We are looking. Raise your hand. Send your comments. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of course, cottage pie is amazing. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Wow, look at that. Wow. Nice job. So are you going to use the plate method or are you going to... Is she going to use the plate method or the spatula method? I'm going to say yours looks so good. Yeah, it does, right? See, see I didn't know Wait, you cook so well you. now. <laughs> so if you want to go for a bit more or more decorative element, you just do the barbecue sauce or balsamic glaze basically mm. at the top. I'll yes. just do on one. Uh. Okay. The, the spoiled one. Wow. Yeah. So it looks more artistic. Wow, 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 wow. We're learning so many tips from how to cut steak, right? Um, how to use the juice, use the sauce, yeah, the oil to make the whole dish more cohesive to plating. Okay. Melissa, mm. will you do the honor to cut the quesadilla? Can. Uh, I think we we'll take a we we'll take a picture. Ah, I will use scissors also. Scissors also can cut by the way. Do we have another phone to take a picture? Picture. Maybe. Any phone? Use your phone and that phone. Oh. Okay lah. Yeah, okay, I can use this too. Yeah. But I think we can if get it. On, I will. Yeah. I can put the meat cup back at the background. Ah, let's say the other, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Melissa, with you here. Oh, wait, I'm here. You created all this. Okay. So let's move it to the left a little. Okay, left. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so all these are junk. I'm going to wash it later. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for tuning all the way in. Do you have any questions uh, on my end or on your app's end? Let us know at this point. My IG is call me Melissa with two underscores. You can look for me there. Yes, please. Ask me any questions from the stream. Ask for my uh, beef cheat sheet and so yes, forth. Yes, do, do. And definitely, yes, choose Australian beef when you buy beef and uh, Make use of all the great promos from the Meat Club. So make sure that you won't be, you know, it definitely uh, can handle beef confidently because it's excellent quality. And now you know all the tricks to cook beef. At Let's home. do the live taste test before we say goodbye. Yes. Yeah, I'll cut you a slice with me. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Look, look. I'm so excited. 
the salsa, the cheese, and the beer. Okay, I'm gonna cheers. Cheers. Very good with beer. Oh my god, I need beer. <laughs> oh. hmm. Amazing. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. This the quesadilla is so so good. Is it like outside standard or so? I think it's better. Mm. Really? Because outside sometimes you feel, you know, like, like you put too much oil or too much, but this is just so good, so pure. There's like acidity, right? Yes. Acidity, yes. Right? Cilantro, the freshness, and then the lime juice. Oh my God. So yes. good. Mm. Oh, I wish I wish your handling the cameras can try. Mm. Mm. So yeah, the only way to know whether Sinian is telling the truth or not is to try the recipe at home. Of course, do try it. So good. Any questions? Can let me know if they have questions. No. Okay. Um, do we want to call it a day? Yes. Sorry, I cannot stop with things. So good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you again, Melissa, for mm, teaching us these two you. lovely recipes. I learned a lot personally, really. Um, what what was okay. the... I think um first thing about cutting, I think, yeah, against the, the grain. Mm -hmm. uh, for steak, it's really it's quite important because you always cut it before you serve, right? Mm, and then let it rest also, another tip very important. Uh, and then how to use the, the, the oil also to add mm. in or use it for sauce. Mm. Um, that's, yeah, that just make, you know, if you just actually very simple things. But if you know, know them, then you really can cook beef very well at home. Mm. Also, I think I learned, every time I learn from you is the, like how to make use of different ingredients, how they come together. Mm, like the lime sauce, the salsa you make, it's just very easy. Mm. But we always, you know, we tend to buy the salsa ready made. Yeah. But it really tastes so different, so much fresher when you made it, make your own. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, please try it really. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you don't need to thank, yeah, don't need to thank us. <laughs> you, will, you will enjoy it. No question. Um, Oh, the orange sauce. Yes, correct. Orange juice, ah, uh, fresh orange juice. Yeah, yeah. And then thank you also very much to uh, Truozzi and the Me Club for making this class possible, mm. uh, and sharing with us the really great quality of Australian beef, uh, and lamb, of course, and chicken. Uh, so of course you might think, you know, of course it's good to visit Australia, but you know now you can't yeah. yet, very soon. But in the meantime, let's uh, make, uh, let's enjoy the great produce. Uh, that yeah. the meat club is bringing us and cook up, you know, a storm perfect even more, you know, our cooking skills since we're yeah. at home, yeah. treat ourselves and our families. So, and then share what you cooked on your app. We will look forward to your version of the quesadilla or the cottage pie. Awesome. A few final words on my end. Yes. Uh, my methodology of cooking, as you can see, right, I try to layer flavors. So always try to layer flavors when it comes to your own recipes as well. Second is pre-made condiments. So these are condiments that you can use for many applications and can go a long way uh, for different dishes. And of course, uh, when you, I purposely chose these two recipes because they are versatile again. This one can be used for like a bolognese even. I can put it as a stuffing for my quesadillas. There's a lot I can do with this. Yeah. And what else do I want to say to you guys? Actually, we'll see each other again next Saturday. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's what we should tell. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> So we'll be on the Zada Live, right? Correct. Yeah. Next Saturday. We're very uh, excited for your right end, Melissa. We will go first time live on Last Live for Red Mars 10 year birthday. And I'm doing a dessert this time. Ooh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I'm really excited because so, Melissa yeah. is so well known for her bakes and her <laughs> dessert. Yes, I tried some before. Mm. So really, yeah, please, we will share more information uh, on social media and also your right uh, emails. So don't miss out next week. We mm -hmm. are going to last live. Mm -hmm. See you guys next week. Uh, if there's nothing else, we should say goodbye and eat this. Second, yes, <laughs> yes. Ta-da! Thank you so much. Bye. Have a bye wonderful bye. day.